Okay, so that's one coat of the uh, perfect, perfect match right there. One coat, and uh, I didn't use a sanding sealer on this, so of course the grain raised a little bit. But uh, there you go. That's the first coat. I'm going to let it dry for about 30 minutes, and uh, I'll come back and uh, throw another coat on this of the uh yep perfect match scratch filler primer this is one of the things i'm worried about right here that i'm working with is a small scratch right there that we're gonna we're trying to fill that because we got this body on discount because it was scratched all right that's it okay so here's the guitar now with its first coat of, or first two coats of wimbledon white uh, duplicolor and you can see that you can still see the grain uh, coming through and I'm kind of concerned about that I I'm wondering if the clear coat is actually going to cover the grain so there it is the it's got a little I have to sand that out because it was a I tried to pull something out of the paint that landed on the paint job but anyway uh, I'll probably put four more coats of Wimbledon white on this uh, sand that little thing out i'm gonna let it cure for a, a day or two and uh you know we'll see we'll see how it goes from there uh, this is the first paint job that i've ever done on uh well since probably in 30 years first paint job i've done in 30 years anyway uh there it is all right okay so this is this is my guitar that I've painted in my garage. It's still on the stand and uh, it's painted like an off-white color. It's a Fender Stratocaster copy. It's a mahogany body. So this, this is 16 coats of primer cured for a week with then six coats of base coat or color cured for a week. And now it's got six coats of finish clear on it which is this activated max two it's got like an activator that a hardener in one side and then it sprays from the other and it's got six coats of that on it so now i'm just tapping on the body to see uh, if you guys can hear this percussive kind of ringing that it's got I'm, I'm just wondering if it's going to sound good after i you know get it all put together so i just wanted to see if you guys can hear this So I'm just knocking on it and it's got kind of like a like a, a ringing like a drum. Anyway, who knows if it's going to, you know, if it's going to sound good or not. And then over here, I've got the headstock that uh, I put I put like 12 coats of uh, true oil on it and and on the entire neck and then i put six coats of that uh two-part poly finish that i'm gonna wet sand these guitars after it or these parts after it cures for and i stamped zero zero one in the uh in the headstock because it's the first one that i ever made and i put my name on it and uh and you know, zero one, and then I named it after my daughter because, you know, my daughter right now is pretty much the main thing on my mind. Uh, she's just a baby girl. She's she's like twenty months old, and and uh, maybe someday she'll play this guitar or it'll be around, and we'll remember when she was just a baby and I made my first guitar, and uh, you know, so 
So maybe I'll actually learn how to play this thing finally in my life. I've I've played around with the guitar off and on throughout my entire life. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll actually learn how to play this time. Who knows? So anyway, I'm making a guitar with the intention of, of you know, actually learning to play it. And uh, there it is, you know, with all of its clear code and and ready to be wet sanded. I'm going to go do some training in California for a week. So it's Sunday right now. And I'll come back next Saturday uh, after this cures for a week. And I'll, uh, I'll wet sand it. So we'll see how it sounds after I put it all together and, uh, and play it. All right, cool. The first thing that we were going to look at uh, was the nut, just to see uh, where it was set at. Because uh, I was watching Dave on Dave's World of Fun Stuff, I think that's what it is. And Dave was talking about the settings uh, at the nut. And it looks like 20 thousandths, or 0 .020, was... Uh, was about where he would like to be, or, or at 18, 18 being the lowest. So I'm way above uh, 18. So let me see here. Here's 18, okay? So here's 18 at the high E. Sits right under the string. No buzzing, right? So if we go to 20 at the high E, well, we start to get some buzzing. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just cut this down just a little bit. Cutting back at an angle. So just kind of twist the blade, dig in on one edge and kind of twist it, right? Always checking your work. This is a tough nut. So it doesn't shape, it doesn't cut down too bad. Okay, so I just kind of dust that out. And I take my file, which I measure out of one of these little one of these little files from this tip cleaning kit right here, right? And I find one of these tip cleaners that's about the same thickness as my string, right? So I just, I just find one about the same, the same thickness of the string, make a comparison. And I like that one. So then I just take that and I smooth down the slot. See that? I smooth down the slot. And I get in there and make sure, looking real close at it, that it's down in there and doing its job. Okay? Check how the nut's sitting. Then I tune it back up. Put a, put a little tuner on there so that we can see where, where, where we are. Bring it up to E. Then we 
get our we're trying to get down to two point two zero. Where is that? Point point two zero. Okay. There it is. Point two zero is where we're trying to get to. Okay. So then we just slide that under, see where we're at. And we still have a ways to go. Okay. Yeah, we can take that way down. Okay, so we'll slack it out. Slack it out, kind of stretch that string. You know, you want your strings to be stretched real, real good. I don't know if you can really see what I'm doing here, but... I'm just kind of rocking this blade back and forth and scooping out the base, right? Watching the profile of the slot and making sure that it stays uniform. Okay, and then we check. And we see where we're at. So that's a 24 and I want a 2 zero. Okay. I'm gonna slide under. And then I'm still way high. Way high. Okay, so I'm gonna just take these down a little by little. Until I'm there. Okay, so the simplest way for me to measure the string height between the bottom of the string and the top of the fret is to go to this, the 17th fret, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, this fret right here, and put my gauge on there, which is marked at a 64th of an inch, and measure 4 64ths, which I'm low. Okay, and if you'll notice, there's a little bit of fret buzz.
So there's fret buzz. There. 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 As we get up past the fifth fret. But no buzzing on the open. And also our our pickups are adjusted all the way down too to allow for us to make this adjustment to the uh, the string height. So I'm just going to adjust the saddles uh, individually uh, and detune the string and then tune back to pitch. So I'm going to detune so that I'm not stressing the uh, the saddle screws then I'm going to that needed to be raised a little so I'm going to tighten and tighten and raise it about a 64th then tune the pitch and check my setting to the bottom of the string And I'm going to take that because it's the low E. I took it all the way to just about 564. Let's look at what our relief is at right here. Let's see what. I'm going to put a capo there. Then we're going to fret our last fret. And we need to be at about. A zero point zero one two is the setting that I'm looking for. Fret the last fret. Let's see if I've got any relief here at the eighth fret. And I do, but the relief is about point zero one zero. So let me check that. So for this guitar, I could probably put a little bit more relief, but you know, I'm going to raise that saddle. 